There are three rules of evolution that I learned from the new Netflix documentary, Life on Our Planet by Steven Spielberg. This documentary breaks down in the best way I've ever seen a documentary do it, the chapters of life from when Earth started four billion years ago. And as I watched it, I was mind blown because the three principles of evolution you can see as the three reasons for success or failure in today's modern day. What you notice through this is that it's not the strongest or the most intelligent that survive, it is the most adaptable that survives. So think about what has all happened in the recent past with COVID-19, the artificial intelligence revolution. These are mini catastrophes that are proving out the principles of life and why adaptation is so important. Now, before I bring you through these three rules of evolution, I need to explain one term, and that is what is a mass extinction event? And you'll see why in a second. A mass extinction event is when over 75% of living things on earth die. And what's really interesting is 75% of businesses die in 15 years from when they're started. So a mass extinction event is happening every 15 years in the business world. Let's dive into three rules of evolution and how you can apply them today. What I'm gonna do for each of these three is I'm gonna break down first, what happened in the distant history. Then second, I'm gonna break down what happened with early humans. And then I'm gonna break down what's happening in the modern day and how you can capitalize on the rule of evolution. Rule of evolution one the best adapted wins. So if we look at the distant past, life as we know it really only started around 450 million years ago. The Earth started 4 billion years ago. So it took 3.5 billion years for life to evolve as we know it. And most of life evolved actually in the oceans first, which then created the first fish, which then created the first amphibians, which then went to reptiles, which then went to early day mammals. Now what's really interesting is when the meteor hit that wiped out all the dinosaurs, the big and strong dinosaurs were the ones that died the fastest. That's why I think at that phase in history, we transitioned from brute force and size as the main reason for success to intelligence becoming the main reason for success. And the animals that survived the meteor strike were the amphibians, the reptiles, and certain ground-dwelling mammals and some birds. And what's interesting is all of the mammals and animals that survived were the most adaptable. So think about it, ground-dwelling mammals. These were like little shrews that could go hide underground, you know, when the air quality wasn't good after the meteor strike, and then could come out and go get food for a little bit and then come back underground. They were adaptable living underground or above ground. The amphibians, they were able to live in water and out of water. The birds, they were able to change their vertical landscape very quickly, which made them very adaptable, whereas the big, mighty dinosaurs were not that adaptable. So now let's transition to early humans. A great example of this is during the Ice Age. It's said that during the Ice Age, the humans had to develop their social capacities and their intelligence capacities, otherwise known as planning capacity. And the reason is because it was so hard to survive during the Ice Age, you know, hunting woolly mammoths and saber-toothed tigers, that humans had to use something different than brute force and just tools in order to succeed. See, the first thing that humans adapted to using was tools, things like spears, using rocks in different ways as cooking utensils or assisting them with their daily activities. But that didn't change things as much as the intelligence and the planning component. So I'm gonna give you a quick example here. Imagine an alligator hunting a buffalo. That seems like a lot of work, right? It's gonna be a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and out of breath, fighting, 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 fighting. That's one versus one. Now, I want you to compare that to a group of humans hunting a pack of buffalo. See, what the humans learned was intelligence and planning at this phase, and an example of this is how they would hunt herds of buffalo by using rocks that were placed in a way that would lead buffalo to the edge of a cliff. One human would get behind the herd, start screaming, bah, 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 clapping their hands really loud, and the buffalo would run. And unconsciously, the buffalo would run in between these lines of rocks, and then they'd get to the edge of a cliff, 
and then the humans would go and scare them off the edge of the cliff and they would be able to kill 30 plus buffalo with zero violence and zero fight. Think about how much of a revolution that is. How much work would it take to individually spear and kill 30 buffalo? So the humans adapted their levels of intelligence and planning to produce disproportionately outsized results as that phase of adaptability. Dogs are another great example. During the Ice Age, wolves, they didn't have a lot of food. So some strain of wolves ended up partnering with humans. Think about how crazy that is. After years and years of evolution, dogs are descendants of wolves that now are bonded with humans through years of evolution and adaptability. So what does this mean today? Well, today we have had so many opportunities for adaptability. So a great example of this in the modern day is COVID-19. Who succeeded and who failed during COVID-19? The people who succeeded were those who were able to adapt rapidly to it. That's a mini example of a meteor crash, a little disruption in our life that exposes who is the most adaptable. And I would even put adaptability ahead of intelligence in this current phase in time because of the speed of technology evolution. Did you know the highest IQ person on planet Earth is a bouncer at a club? Think about that. Have you ever seen a big jacked bodybuilder that is not doing too well in their lives? Well, these are examples of someone optimizing for strength and someone optimizing for intelligence, but they're not that successful. And then we see these nerds become billionaires. What the heck is going on? So my belief is right now, the people who are going to succeed are those who can embrace technology evolution at the fastest and most precise levels. And right now with everything going on with artificial intelligence and ChatGPT, it is the next pinnacle of an evolution about to happen. Rule of evolution number two, competition drives adaptation. So there's two types of competition. There's competition between species and there's competition within species. For example, competition between species is, let's say that a carcass of an animal is on the ground, a dead elephant or something, and a lion goes up to it and a hyena goes up to it. Well, that's competition between species. Which species is going to win the food? Competition within species is how one species and different members of that same species compete for the same resources, like competing for a mate, for example. So if you really look at how competition works, the old species that don't adapt will die out and the ones that successfully keep winning competitions are going to reproduce and spread. So if you've ever seen a nature documentary, you've probably heard that if a lion feels threatened by another male lion, it'll kill the other male lion and all the cubs in order to create a new family with the lioness. That's a great example of competition within species. I want you to think about another example. Two terror birds, which they break down in the documentary, scary things, both go up to an animal carcass and they start fighting over who's gonna eat the carcass. And as they're fighting, a saber-toothed tiger comes up and kills both of them. That's competition within species and then competition between species. So let's look at an example of this in early humans. Competition between early humans really started with strength and status. And over time, it evolved into intelligence and teamwork. And the only reason we had so much time to develop our mental faculties and our intelligence and our teamwork abilities is because we had no real big predators for millions of years that could outsmart us. So that gave us a long enough time to develop our brains. And once we started cultivating our intelligence, that forced the need for us to create a niche or finding a specialization for every human. So this is the concept of specialization of labor. This is where segmentation of people's skills started happening. So the person who was best at hunting would stay focused on hunting most of the time. The person best at cooking and cleaning stayed focused on that most of the time. The people who were best at different skills within the human tribe would start specializing in those skills. And after a couple periods of evolution, eventually the biggest change ever happen and that was the agricultural revolution which made humans the first animal ever to not be a hunter 
So farmers were able to go and create food, and then humans were able to trade with one another in order to gather resources in order to be able to buy food. Because of this, the specialization of labor exponentially grew at a rapid pace. So in today's day and world, here's a great example of competition, TikTok, right? When TikTok originally launched, TikTok stole the eyeballs of so many people, so much that the eyeballs or the attention on other platforms such as Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube decreased. What was the evolution that came out of these companies? Short form videos. What happened was the innovation, the evolution of TikTok, making short form videos popular, forced innovation from Facebook and Instagram to create their reels, and then YouTube to create YouTube shorts. So this open nature of competition is actually what drives innovation. So we should be grateful for competition for people's eyeballs, businesses competing for the best talent, businesses and individuals competing for resources, scarce resources. And just like the strongest species tend to be those who multiply and expand, the strongest companies, the strongest ideas, the things that actually provide the most value will ultimately outcompete its competitors. Now, what's really interesting here is in the past, competition was fighting. It was, I'm gonna compete against you for this mate or for this food or for this resource. Now, competition revolves entirely around value creation. The more you and I are focused on creating massive value for the world, the more competition proof we become. Which leads me to the third rule of evolution. Earth never remains stable for long. If you look over history, there's really three things that constantly throw a wrench in Earth's trajectory. Number one is volcanoes. Number two is meteors. And number three is ice. So we had ice ages, we had volcanic activity that did global warming at epic extremes. Actually, one of the worst extinction events was not a meteor, it was volcanic activity creating really high temperatures that killed off almost 90% of Earth's population at one point in time. Now, the longest stretch where there was no change on Earth was a 100 million year stretch, which was when the dinosaurs ruled the Earth. But inevitably, Earth does not remain still for long. And what happened? The meteor. If you take this to early humans, the fact that the Ice Age happened was the main reason that humans' brains actually became bigger because in order to survive, the humans with the bigger brains tended to be the ones with more thinking capacity, which ended up being able to hunt animals with more strategy and more success. And therefore, the humans with the bigger brains were the ones that reproduced. That's what made our big brains today is a replication of the people in the past who were the most successful. So if we take this to modern times and we go back to the agricultural revolution, which was only 12,000 years ago, holy crap, do you realize how short of a time frame that is that we just started farming? And then the industrial revolution is only a couple hundred years ago. Like when we started using machinery at scale to produce goods and services. The virtual revolution only happened a couple years ago with COVID-19. The AI revolution is happening right now. So we notice these small examples of Earth never remaining stable through these recent changes in history and these distant changes in history. And the humans that are gonna be the most successful through this time frame are those who embrace change and embrace evolution in their day-to-day -day lives. The fact that things change so rapidly gives you and I more opportunities to pounce on new opportunities and more opportunities to become the next competition-proof person, brand, company, or whatever we want in our lives. So in summary, if four billion years of history are showing us that adaptability is the most important component to survival and thriving of life, what does that say about your life and my life? What I think it shows is that we need to practice the skill of one thing, adaptability. We have to question, where are we not being adaptable in our lives? Where are we so fixed in our routines that we're not seeing the new opportunities in front of us? Where are we going through the motions because it's easier to do that than to question everything we're doing and to constantly be in a state of change, but 
being in a state of change is the number one piece of evidence behind what makes life multiply over 4 billion years. So in the comments below, let me know one thing that you're gonna do in your life or business to become more adaptable. Is it embrace AI? I don't know what it is for you, but write it down in the comments below so I can hold you accountable to it. And I'll see you in the next video. Stay great.